In the last couple of units on stairs, we've had a quick introduction to Revit railings. In this unit, I want to concentrate specifically on railings, both in their hosted form, i.e. hosted onto stairs and ramps, and also in their freestanding form, such as the example here. Now, we'll start off by saying that railings are a system family. That is, they are created by Revit in a project environment when you need them. You can't, for example, take this railing within this project and save it as a separate Revit family outside of the project. It only exists in the project in which it's created. Just like any other system family in Revit, you can create as many additional types as you need. So I'm going to show you the principle of creating new railing types now. Let's take this railing type here as an example to show you where you find the various parameters and how you adjust them. So if I select that railing, it comes up in the properties palette. So this one's called a 900 mil pipe. Now, if I go to edit type, if I just move the properties palette over to one side, the two main areas you need to look at in order to define your own railing type is the rail structure. There's a button there. We'll go and have a look at that in a second. And the baluster placement. Now, the rails refer to the horizontal elements of our railing and the balusters are the vertical elements and you can define for both those horizontal and vertical elements what profile you want, the space in between them, any offsets etc. So let's start with the rail structure which is the horizontal elements here. So rail structure, hit edit and we get a panel that comes up here. You can see for each horizontal rail in your railing you have an entry in this schedule here so there's the rail numbers or the names. You define the height from the base each one is placed at and any offsets. And here's the important thing. You can actually choose a profile so you can create your own profile. So whatever shape you've got in mind for the cross section of the rail, you can create a profile and load it in there. And you can choose a category of material that you want that rail to be produced out of. So if you want additional rails, you just insert. So you can move these up or down. It's like a, a simple sort of spreadsheet. So everywhere that you want a rail, a horizontal rail in your railing, you need to put an entry in here. Give it a name. Give it a height from the base. Give it a profile, which is the cross-sectional shape of the rail and any material that it's made out of. OK. Let's take a look at the verticals now, the balusters. So baluster placement. This panel is a little bit more complicated. Now there's two main areas, the main pattern and the posts. The main pattern, if I just move this down here so you can see clearly. So for each individual segment of rail, so this would be uh, considered a segment, this one straight length there, then the next arc would be another segment. So for each segment we have a main pattern, the regular pattern for the balusters and that's what this refers to here. So you can see there is one baluster type. Again you can choose a family, you can tell it the spacing, the distance from the previous one and that is what is generating this panel of vertical balusters. In the lower half of the panel we have another uh, section here. We can define unique conditions for the start post at the beginning of the railing. Again you could aim it at a different family. This is just pointing to the same family as the main pattern. You can tell it what happens when it comes to a corner. Again you might have a unique baluster family you want to uh, to put in there and finally you can choose your own baluster family for what happens at the end of the railing. So a lot of customization there so in conjunction with the horizontal rails you can create virtually any railing type that you can envisage. So to create a new railing type 
start with one that's similar to what you're after. Um, let's take this one here that we've just been looking at. 900 mil pipe. Hit the edit type button. You've heard me say this uh, a few times so far in the course. Hit that duplicate button before you do anything else. We want to make a copy of this one. We don't want to change anything here. Otherwise it's going to change this specific railing. We want to create a new type based on this one. So hit duplicate. Give it a name. Remember Revit by default will just take the existing name and put two after it. You change it to whatever's more meaningful to you. I'll leave that as it is just for now. So now we've got a new version, 900mm pipe 2. Now we can go into rail structure and baluster placement and we can adjust these, add more rails in, take some away, change the profiles, change the materials, go into that baluster placement, change the profiles here of the main pattern. Remember to consider how you want the railing to be treated, where it starts, the start post, do you want a different Revit family here, the corner post, what happens at corners, and again, what happens at the end of your railing. Going back to my examples here on screen, you can see that some of the railings, i.e. the ones on the stairs and the ramp, are hosted onto elements and they follow it in terms of its shape. And this example here is just a horizontal railing that is freestanding, i.e. it's not hosted on anything. So two different types, hosted and non-hosted. I did cover hosting of railings onto stairs previously. I'll just go through that again. So when we created the stairs, it created the railings at the same time. These are separate elements as you can see there when I hover over so I can delete them one or both so if we want to re-host a railing onto this particular stair just go to railing place on host choose the type from the type selector let's go for a glass panel type hover over and Revit will detect an applicable host and really you've only got a choice of stairs or ramps click and Revit creates two separate railing families and places them onto the host just note that for that to work the host shouldn't have any railings on to start with what I mean by that is if I take one of those railings and delete it go back to railing and place on host it won't detect it because it's already got a railing on. What I need to do is make sure the host has no railings on at all, then go back to railing, place on host, and now it will find it and I can place them on. So we've looked at the properties of a railing We've looked at how we can change its type from the type selector. We've looked at how it's made up from rails and balusters, how we can configure that. We've looked at how we can place railings onto hosts, onto ramps and stairs, if they haven't got any. The last thing we want to look at is how we actually create this system family in the shape we need. Um, in a horizontal format so for example around a stairwell or on a balcony so I'm going to show you how to do that now so let's switch to a plan view and there's the railing we were just looking at let's create something similar to that from scratch now so we go to architecture railing and we want sketch path we're going to tell Revit where we want that railing to be we immediately go into sketch mode, green tick, red cross, a draw palette. Just have a look on the options bar. Remember the options bar is this area here where my cursor is now and it only appears when you have a command selected. Just show you that quickly. Come back out of railing. See it's blank at the moment. There's nothing there when Revit is in the default state. When I go back to railing, sketch path 
we now have some options on the options bar one of those is chain leave that turned on it just means that as we start to use this draw palette to define the segments or the path we don't have to go back each time pick another option up here we can just carry on drawing in one continuous chain so let's start putting our path in start with a straight segment let's come down there for example remember the temporary dimensions we looked at earlier in the course you can just type in now an exact uh, distance if you if you know that I'm just going to do this by eye so let's put the first one there because we've got chain turned on I can carry on defining the path let's put a curve in so switch to an arc on my draw palette now I'm going to define I've already defined the start there I'm going to define the end of the arc and then the radius go back to a straight section and put one more arc in to finish off okay hit modify just to stop drawing any more segments choose a railing type now remember we can swap it out after once we've created the railing if we need to but let's swap it back for that 900 mil pipe so we've drawn the path we've picked a type and in this version of sketch mode for railings we don't need a closed loop so you can see it's an open sketch here that's absolutely fine let's go ahead hit the green tick Revit instantly creates the railing and we'll switch back to our 3D view and take a look at it and there's the the railing we've just created and that completes this unit to get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.